Something happened here, natural or supernatural, that would change the world forever. Now science proves it's over 2,000 years old. This is where the hope of eternal life began, with one man, whose image was miraculously imprinted on this shroud. We're embarking on a journey to uncover where this sacred cloth is mentioned in and out of the Bible and throughout history. Now, we move beyond the tomb, racing through time and space. The Shroud's journey begins, tracing an unseen path towards the Mount of Olives, where faith and history converge. Here, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus stood with his disciples. The Shroud, perhaps already in safekeeping, carries his image, a silent witness to this sacred moment. As Jesus ascends, the world below fades. The camera races skyward, echoing the Shroud's mysterious journey through time. The next stop, Galatia around 50 AD, where Paul's writings may hint at this sacred cloth. We leave Jerusalem and go to the southern cities of Galatia where Paul first visited between 46 to 48 AD, according to scholars. We descend from the clouds, the Turkish coastline stretching below. Racing through Iconium streets, the market fades. We're about to go deep beneath the city, where a small group gathers in the shadows, their eyes fixed on the shroud, the subject of Paul's future letter in the book of Galatians 3. Tuto est in emphanisis tu Iesu Christus stavrothentos. Simeon embros ten ton ophthalmonimon. This is a portrayal of Jesus Christ crucified. It's a sign before your eyes. Paul wrote Galatians 3 around 48-55 AD sometime after visiting Galatia. It's a verse that scholars still grapple with. O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? He speaks of a portrayal of Jesus Christ crucified, and while its meaning remains debated, this could be a reference to the shroud. The Greek word used for portrayal can imply a visual depiction like in a drawing. The only way the Galatians could have seen such an image is if Paul had shown them the shroud itself, the spear wound in the side, the nail marks in the wrists and feet, and the thorn piercings around the head. From the tunnels of Iconium, we race west along the rugged coastline of Asia Minor toward Ephesus, the heart of Roman influence. Paul's mission deepens, the shroud kept hidden in secrecy from the authorities as the message spreads. It's 55 AD in Ephesus. The streets pulse with life as we weave through bustling markets and towering Roman columns. Merchants call out, their voices blending with the sound of ships unloading at the busy harbour. We race past temples and crowds, feeling the energy of a city at the heart of the empire. Somewhere within this sprawling maze, Paul sits in quiet reflection ready to pen a message that will ripple far beyond these streets. In 1 Corinthians 13, Paul speaks about love, but near the end he reflects on mystery. He writes, For now we see through a glass dimly, but then face to face. In Paul's time, mirrors were imperfect, offering faint reflections. But why focus on the face of Christ? Of all images, Paul chooses this one. Some suggest he was hinting at the Shroud of Turin, the Shroud's faint negative image of a face aligns with Paul's words, how we now see Christ dimly, like a shadow. But one day, we will see him clearly, face to face. Today we can see the Shroud much more clearly. Since the late 1800s, photography revealed that its negative image turns into a positive, bringing the face into sharper detail. With modern technology, we can now enhance and study the image, bringing the face of Christ to life in ways Paul and his followers could never have imagined. Yet, what we reveal through this technology supports the Shroud's authenticity, an image of a first-century Nazarene matching the descriptions of Jesus. It resembles the iconic depictions seen throughout centuries, but here, it's more realistic, more authentic, offering a tangible connection to the face that shaped history.